still pursuing that type of diet, and what are your thoughts on the logical justifications of veganism? I don't think I ever said vegan, I think I said vegetarian. Um, I am vegetarian at home. Uh, I haven't proceeded to the point where I um, where I'm invited out to dinner where I tell my host I'm vegetarian. Um, so I'm kind of halfway there. Um, I have, there, there's some parts of the book about the basis of morality of the way we treat non-human animals. I'm interested in looking back historically at the way um, ethics have changed. Uh, it's not that long ago that we believed in slavery. Uh, we treated women as second class citizens who didn't get the vote. I think in this country till in what, 1920 something? Um, and similarly in Britain. Uh, later in France, I think somewhere in the 1940s in France, um, 1970s in Switzerland, uh, and of course in some Arab countries. Not yet. Um, so that there, there is a, 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 a rapid shift in, in our moral outlook, which I call the shifting moral zeitgeist, and it's pretty dramatic. You can tell uh, if you look at just ordinary sort of pulp fiction, ordinary detective stories and things. Uh, you could tell more or less which decade of the 20th century they were, they were written in. Um, you, you get sort of great work. Hugh Lofting's Dr. Doolittle, for, for example, is, is written in the 1920s uh, and is banned from public libraries in various places in Britain and I think America because of racism, because um, uh, it, he, he treats Dr. Dr. Doolittle treats black people in Africa in a sort of patronizing way. That was normal in the 1920s. That, that's the way everybody thought in the 1920s in Britain and America. Um, and, and now they don't. Now they've changed. We've had our consciousness raised. So there is a shifting moral zeitgeist. Uh, if you look back in the 19th century, people like Thomas Henry Huxley, Darwin's <coughs> bulldog, who was a, a great staunch advanced liberal in his time, so was Darwin himself, so was Abraham Lincoln. Um, these men were, by today's standards, the most appalling racists. Uh, but, we, but of course, as you know, we can't judge the past by the standards of the present. That's because of the shifting moral zeitgeist. So it's tempting to look to the future and say, what will people a hundred years' time think looking back at us? What is the equivalent for them? What will be the equivalent for them for when we look back on slavery? And the obvious candidate is the way we treat non-human animals. Um, suffering, pain, we're tempted to think that because we are human, they are mere animals. We have a sort of monopoly on the ability to suffer, the ability to feel pain. But if you think about what pain is, is like, it doesn't feel like the kind of thing you need intelligence for in order to... <laughs> Uh, to suffer from it, does it? Um, if you think as a Darwinian what pain is for, pain is a warning to the animal. It's a negative reinforcer. It's telling the animal, don't do that again. Whatever you've just done, like picking up a red hot coal or something, the pain of doing so <coughs> is a kind of uh, signal that says, if you do that kind of thing again, you might die. And so the, fu the biological function of pain is to teach animals not to do damaging things, things that damage their bodies, damage their chances of survival. Well, if you're an intelligent species, might you not need actually less pain in order to be warned not to do that again? Maybe animals that are less intelligent actually need more in, intense pain to perform the Darwinian function of pain. I'm not sure how far to take that argument, but I think at the very least we might give non-human animals the benefit of the doubt. And so that's kind of the, the basis for my worry about, about the way we treat non-human animals. I keep saying non-human animals because we are animals. Um, 
perhaps at least we should, as I say, give them the benefit of the doubt. So I, I'm more worried, actually, about uh, inflicting pain on farm animals, suffering on farm animals, than I am actually on, on eating them. If they, if they could be kept in humane ways and killed in, in humane ways, I would be less worried about it. I don't think they are. 